No 7600 XT. Sorry, other things are too good. Your TV's gonna get faster. And your GPUs aren't gonna get more expensive. It's getting the hot news, everybody. It's Thursday, January 4th, 2024. I may have mistakenly said 2023 yesterday. I'm still working out the little cobwebs in my brain in order to make that happen. And AMD and Kyle. is working out the cobwebs in their sales strategy because they apparently launched a GPU that was too good over in China. The 6750 GRE is selling so well at the price point of 269 to 289 that they have no desire to sell the upcoming 7600 XT. The 6750 GRE comes in, in 10 or 12 gigabyte varieties and again costs very little. Costs less than an RTX 4060 and according to some benchmarks performs 50% faster. Very good. Than a 4060. It is nowhere near as efficient, but it is definitely faster and who, uh, cheaper. Well, who cares about efficiency? Nobody. There's plenty of fish in the sea. That's what I always say. Do you believe that? Yeah, there's plenty of fish I see, and there's 10 in Tennessee. We, we don't have an aquarium here. And AMD is not going to have the 7600 XT in China because they get the GPU that's very good, and we do not. They're just not giving it to the 7600 XT? Like what, it's just it, not going out there? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense to launch it because it's probably gonna be close in performance. Like a 6750 XT to the 7600 XT, like it's gonna get close. And then the price point of this GRE is just too dang good. Mm. So AMD is already making all these sales over in China, but we don't get it. I want it, I want the rabbit. Well, do you want a new phone? Maybe you do. Okay, hear me out. Galaxy S24 officially gonna be coming out or getting announced on January 17th. Galaxy AI is coming. They want yeah, you to baby. know that this is a new generation. It's like the new wave of things. 2024 is the year of big speed. I mean, that that's part of it. Like the trailer for this kind of hypes up the generations of phones that they've had, whether it was the mobile, the first mobile phone they had, the first TV phone, immersive displays on the Galaxy Note, water resistance on the S5, Samsung Pay on the Galaxy S6, and then the flip in the fold. And they're just going to be talking about all of the AI they're bringing. Like, they just glossed right over the edges. They, they edged they, right past. They <laughs> sailed right off. Yeah. That's what happened. Well, they're bringing out generative edit and live translate, things that other phones already have. And again, yeah, you no, know, you bring up Bixby. I trust Samsung with my whole heart. But in case you are looking at picking up the new Galaxy lineup, if you click our affiliate link in the video description, you can get $50 in Samsung credit on a pre-order. All you have to do it, like it costs nothing, you just reserve the phone and they just get your information and you get 50 bucks off. Less money for you to spend, more money for Samsung to lose and more FPS and confusion for us to have because VESA has a new certification for the upcoming dual spec monitors so that you know exactly it's certified to run at 144 hertz at 2160p or 280 hertz at 1080p. Now I'm gonna have an official certification from Why? the basis standard so that you know it's good and it runs that. Is this gonna be like an HDMI thing where they just, it doesn't really matter and they just use it as a way to sue people who like don't realize that it's an actual certification? Couldn't possibly. Okay. <laughs> that sounds capitalistic, I don't believe that. <laughs> but speaking of refresh rates being different, LG is supposed to be having some new TVs that they're gonna debut at CES next week, which we're going to. I'm so excited. You get to go to Vegas. You get to see the orb. It's the sphere, man. <laughs> I'm a failure. Well, their new OLED Evo TVs, the M4 and the G4, have 144 hertz refresh rate. But That's a lot of pain. It's got new AI as or well coming cars. in. The Alpha 11 processor, 70% improvement in graphics performance and 30% faster processing speed, which just gonna really help with upscaling some content that you have. It's not like you're not gonna be playing video games natively on the TV, although they do come with support for cloud streaming in case you wanna do something like GeForce Now. I, I feel like it's, it's great when TVs, they be doing this. It's now 144 hertz. Yeah. They only used to be 120. Yeah. The only 144 hertz TV I knew about was Linus's 115 inch thing that he smuggled out of China. He's one of two people who have this. He's keeping it, huh? Well, now you can go get your own. Oh, but we're gonna smuggle oh. some deals out of Reese. Whoa, you hear that? No. Reese? No, I yank him in. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. I'm still a little bit sick, but not sick enough to still do deals, so hey. Deals. Starting off today, we have this super sleek looking Antec NX500M M80X case for only $47.99 with a coupon applied. 
But then next up, we have the legendary Sennheiser HD280 Pro monitoring headphones for only $69, making it $60 off. If you already have an external microphone, a nice set of reference headphones can be a good audio upgrade, so hey. And then lastly, we have this combo bundle from Micro Center, which is an in-store deal only. But you can grab the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D, an ASUS Tough Gaming B550 Plus Wi-Fi 2 motherboard, 16 gigs of G-Skill Ripjaw 4 DDR4 running at 3200MHz for only $349.99, making it $169.98 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm handing off back to Brett and Kyla for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, we got a great deal when it comes to the solid state battery industry. QuantumScape, who has partnered with Volkswagen, has announced that they have had some positive testing on their 24 layer solid state cells to see, are these actually gonna be able to run as long and as far as they need them to be? That sounded like a little nursery rhyme. Did it? The quantum sakes 24 layer cells seem to be something, something you and me. <laughs> that's what you said, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. You and me will likely be in one of these vehicles for an upcoming Sweet cannonball you at some point. You and me will likely be. I just got that Dracula flow? Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Dracula flow. I don't know what that means. We straight gas and cutting straight to the bricks. But with reports for the solid state battery showing that it has 95% of its original capacity over a thousand charge cycles, which is above what it needs to be over 700 charge cycles, it's supposed to be 20% loss. So it's doing even better than that. Now, obviously you need to take this with a pound of lithium because Volkswagen has been known to fudge and forge and fake tests before. I hear it everywhere now. <laughs> what? You hear what? Alliteration. <laughs> we smoke in symbiotes. Pound of lithium. <laughs> <laughs> I, so that was not medical advice. Then I remembered lithium is like an actual prescription that people can take. So don't do that. It's bad. Or do if you're prescribed it. Let's stay on the EV train. Let's stay in the lithium Well, I side meant of it things. in the sense yeah. of like EVs, but then you were like, oh, it's medicine. It is. <laughs> like, like lithium is a prescription, but Tesla has a prescription for uh, not doing so hot. Is it the more cowbell thing where. <laughs> we are road. so off the rails. Sorry. I'm trying to really bring us sorry. back. On. Really <laughs> that, sorry. That sweatshirt just like rockets you into a stratosphere <laughs> of making things difficult for me. Tesla announced that it sold the most EVs that it ever has in a year 1.8 million. They were supposed to sell two, but then they advised that down in Q3 and they delivered 484,000 Teslas in Q4 alone. Now, they did not announce how many Cybertrucks that was. You're still keeping that all hush four, hush. It's four yeah, cyber it, trucks. But it doesn't matter because they're no longer the world's largest EV maker. That goes to BYD in China, who actually outsold Tesla in Q4 of 2023. Tesla's still bigger over the course of 2023, but as of Q4, BYD has now surpassed them, coming in with 526,000 vehicles delivered and likely continuing to outpace them, especially because they have the largest market to sell to. So it's likely that Tesla now takes backseat to BYD. But again, we don't know how many Cybertrucks they're selling. So who knows? I did just see a little quip in one of the articles you were looking at yeah. that Elon literally laughed them off when yeah, a while ago. It. Yeah, BYD <laughs> used to be something that was laughable at one mm. point. Like it's not, and then they've become a better company. A lot of these companies' ambitions in the EV sector didn't really play out the way that they wanted until very recently. And now BYD is uh, manifesting. The, like it's the same thing. Tesla was laughable up until the Model Three. Like they were never going to succeed unless they passed the Model Three hurdle, and then they finally did it, and everything's good. But we don't know how many Cybertrucks were sold. So we don't know if Ford is lying that the Lightning is the best-selling electric pickup truck in the US, which they announced because Rivian fell short of all of its sales. <laughs> Whoopsies. But with that, Ford announcing that they're going to be changing a few things up with the Lightning. They're just going to be making it way more expensive. Good. The, the starting price is now going to be $55,000. That's uh, not a lot of money at all. The Lariat trim, which appears to be one of the most popular ones with the extended range, is going to be 80 grand. And then the Platinum is the only one coming down in price by $2,000. So now it's like 94, 95. It's great. What the heck's the Platinum? That it has the extra good seats and the extra good sound system. It's slightly better. It's like the limited or the the titanium on the, the older Ford cars. Like the Focus had a titanium. Maybe. 
but they have a platinum black version, which is all blacked out. It was the matte black one, and that one's $98,000, very expensive. EVs are changing. It's a constant whirlwind of uh, what's going on, but Ford also announcing that they're cutting production of the Lightning as well. Like they're not gonna be making as much next year, which I saw coming from a mile away because the biggest problem with EV manufacturers is not designing the car, it's actually getting the batteries. Tesla figured that out. Nobody else really has in the US and it still has to be developed. Speaking of another thing that Elon Musk did, Starlink launching its first ever cell phone towers in space, partnering with T-Mobile here in the United States. And they launched six Starlink satellites, which have those cellular transmissions. And they're gonna be partnering with cellular carriers in other countries, such as Canada, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland, Chile and Peru. Elon Musk saying that this is not supposed to be replacing terrestrial carriers like the people down here on Terrestria, but it's supposed to be good for Ain't if that you the Minecraft ripoff. That is the Minecraft ripoff. You're right. But text messaging should potentially roll out later this year with voice and data service to come out sometime next year. T-Mobile is now planning some field testing for that. And the U.S. government is testing the patience of every PC buyer out there in the entire world every PC buyer here in the United States, because just a few days ago, Kyler, did you know that there was supposed to be a 25% tariff implemented on PC parts, including graphics cards? Didn't know that. Yep, turns out it got pushed back to May 31st. Oh, thank goodness. Well, so <laughs> we joke like that, but one of the reasons this happened was because companies were advocating to the government being like, you didn't really communicate this to anybody, that this was all going down, that prices were gonna get ridiculous. Again. Again. So could you could you not? And then they pushed it back, but now there's the, the companies are advocating that this gets repealed altogether because this was implemented during 2018 during President Trump. And then it kind of only applied to a certain subsect of PC parts. Then it expanded to different ones, but then it got put on pause in 2019. Then it came into effect again in 2021. And then in 2022, it got turned off and then keeps getting pushed back and we don't know what's going on. But that is one of the reasons why GPU prices were so high just a few years ago. It wasn't just mining. It was also these tariffs were actually being implemented and they could still potentially come back. June 1st, we might start seeing 25% higher prices on GPUs. You want a $3,000 RTX 4090 Ti? I know some of you do. I've read a report that there's more 4090 sold than Steam decks. People like the high-end goodness. That's, how do people have money? Where do you get money? How? Wh what, what do you do to acquire? Where are these trees planted? Please tell us. And where are the little seeds of your comments planted? In the comments section. Can we read it? Below. Or do they have it on the side? They change it sometimes. Sometimes it goes on the side. For Does it? I think I've I never seen that. Uh, maybe I'm making stuff up, but you know who's not making things up? Oh, I figured... Brett, whenever he says that he's about to read the comments. I thought you were going to do it. Soy saying the annoying thing with the APUs for budget systems is still AMD segmentation. You need to go 8 core 8700G to get all 12 compute units. Going with the 6 core 8600G is already only 8 compute units. And you basically forget the other two with 4 compute units. I know. I know. The best bang for buck would be like a Ryzen 5 with 6 cores and then like the full GPU being smushed together. That would be great. But segmentation is how you have margin. It's how you actually make your money. It makes a lot of sense. It is it is frustrating. I get it. And then we had the Finnish Techie saying, I'm so hyped for the 4000 Super Series, but not because I want to buy them. It's because I want to buy the non-Supers for cheap. I don't... I think NVIDIA is just going to get rid of them. Yeah, and then they'll just get sold secondhand for probably like around the same amount. Do you want to buy a used GPU? Ew. Filthy. Stinky. <sighs> Ghost Theorem Production saying, strangely, the latest APUs are the first legitimate reason to go AM5, to which I took exception. But thankfully, Jason Chen had my back saying, so like the 7800X3D kicking A doesn't count? That's what I'm saying. The 7800X3D was like the inflection point for AMD on the AM5. It's good stuff. I. It's a reason to like, if you're gonna build your first computer, if you wanna get an APU, go AM5. Mm. Nice. Mm. Got the little, now you're now you're in the future. You're a man living in the future, not the past or Thank present. You. We got Wolvie saying, my first gaming PC had a 1070. I love seeing integrated graphics creep up on the power of my old hardware hat. I agree. <laughs> and then we got RC Villapando saying, I dream of the day a handheld will be as consistent as a console and long lasting as a smartphone. OLED. 90 to 120 hertz, six to eight hour battery life, 
Little to no power draw when resting. 1080p, ooey! I hear you, and I desire these things as well, but I know one thing about myself. I want those things right now, when that product actually comes out, because we, I, we're probably like three to four years away from that existing, I will want more. That will not satisfy me when it actually exists. I just will want more. I'd, I'd give me better. If we got solid state batteries in four years, why can't I have a, a 24 hour battery life? What do you mean I have to charge this every day? It's ridiculous. I mean, it'll be like a gaming laptop where like, you're not really using it on the go. You're not gaming on it on the go. But I can dream that I you're am. You're not heavy gaming on it on the go. Uh, maybe uh, it's, like, play it's, it's like the people who complain about EVs and they're like, I need 7,000 miles of range because I want to drive across the country without stopping and realistically, they never leave their hometown. But we need that. We absolutely do. <laughs> Cameron saying, I love that we're finally getting competent APUs, dragging closer to getting PS5 performance and a PC chip. I don't think these APUs are gonna get that close, but I do, I'm always upset when we cannot get the APU from consoles, just on a desktop. Just, just give me that. Just give me the 10 teraflops. Like, why can't we? Just... Why can't I just rip this out well, and put it in now a you're PC. being condescending here. Just give it. <laughs> Why? How, how is that condescending? I thought, I thought you were like, yeah, Kyler, just take it out and put it in. No, I wasn't being condescending. Okay. You were unvibing me so hard. Today. Sorry. My I want 10 teraflops. Let me have a 400 watt APU, please. Let me figure out how to cool it. I didn't know there were little feces on these. Oh yeah, they got a little rub rubbery dudes. I'm not, I'm a real gamer, so I don't have an Xbox. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> User saying, imagine saying 1060-ish performance is good enough in 2024. People really love torturing themselves, LOL. It is for a very low-end machine. It, also, also, <laughs> like, not everybody has the ability to get good, great stuff. Sometimes you just have to make do. APUs are great for the people who are saving up. You know, they're looking at, I've got a year between either I could get this six core PC right now that can play 1060 level, or I could build a PC with a 1060 with a CPU from a few years ago, or I could get a modern CPU and then just kind of endure for a little while. Or maybe it doesn't make any sense at all because if you build something with an APU, then all the tariffs are gonna come into effect at the end of May, and then it's not gonna matter. You should have bought a GPU anyways. So this this brings up a very interesting conversation that I don't think PC gamers like to have a lot. Uh -oh. So like these APUs, they're probably gonna be pricey. You throw on a motherboard, you throw on RAM, you throw on all this other stuff. Just get a Series S for 200 bucks, man. You get four teraflops of gaming performance. This thing's $400, right? Like that's 10 teraflops of gaming performance. Like freaking, you can do more with PC. I get it. But if you're just looking to game, that's just dust. You're gonna have to sneeze in a little bit. I've been sneezing a lot recently down here. It's probably because we cleaned everything out and all the dust bunnies are flipping and flopping. Love bunnies. 